Thought I had a little bit of chocolate on my lip. I might because I got these blue light blockers. Then I got my... Let me see. Do I got any... No, I got chocolate on my face. Good. All right. I, I guess I can get going with this guy. Okay, and I'm back. Um, anyway, I wanted to actually make a video talking about the types of people that run the world. Um, as you guys know, I've been, I've been pushing a guy named Rolo Tomasi a lot more uh, in recent times uh, because I feel that there, that there are elements of what he talks about as it relates to human behavior that have great implications as to us move, have huge implications that relate to us either moving forward as a species or not. One of the biggest problems that, we, that I have with hyperliberalism, and if like if I say hyperliberalism, just assume that I'm talking about like people that are into like um, like I, I wouldn't classify as like the Black Lives Black Lives Matter movement as being hyperliberal. I would just classify that as being like, hey, look, that that's obvious. You know what I mean? Black people don't get as good of a of an uh, of an opportunity in this society. It's obvious. Um, I would classify hyperliberalism. You know, like feminism would be t uh, tied into that. If you look at people who are like so set on these uh, on these vaccines and whatnot that are like you have to take the vaccines, um, anything that relates to um, the bashing of discourse on certain elements of science, like I guess people who are hardcore science oftentimes end up being hyper liberal, even when this when it's not really scientific. Um, they've I feel as though they have changed the parameters of how we can discuss certain things. Like I've been, as you guys have known, I've been quite a bit vocal lately in terms of my opinions upon the world and how things run. And a common tendency that ends up occurring whenever I start speaking more directly about the problems I have with our society directly is that uh, the more direct I am, the more people are going to want to tell me, you know, I really, I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I just, I don't like the way that you're saying it. And this goes back to, 2014, 2015, where I'd say something factual as in, okay, uh, CrossFit doesn't train in the transverse plane of motion, and therefore that's going to be problematic because if, you, if you're not good at potentiating the transverse plane of motion, you are missing a huge part of the equation as it relates to biomechanics, one of the most fundamental. Transverse rotation is humongous. Rotation in general is humongous, but transverse rotation is, is a humongous component of, uh, of functionality. It, it's a part of the equation. It's not the only part of the equation, but it's one of the, one of the bigger ones. And when I used to tell people that back in the day, and I would say it unapologetically, people were very apt to want to say, "Hey, you know, I, first and foremost, what you would get, you'd get people who would just deflect and say, I 'I don't like that you're being so negative about this. You shouldn't be so critical. You shouldn't be so judgmental.' And then I would follow that up by saying, um, "You are doing an Olympic lift on your." Instagram profile. So obviously you're threatened by what it is that I have to say. I got to call it like it is. You have a vested interest. So therefore your opinion is probably not going to be that valid. So I would say that. And then people would then go off and say, well, you're being, uh, you're being negative now and I don't like the fact that you're being negative, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. And what I've come to realize is that behind closed doors, nobody really talks in terms of trying people who get shit done. Don't talk in manners that are, a, uh, that, that appease to people's insecurities. Either you get the job done and the numbers show that you get the job done or you get slapped in the face with, uh, with accountability and, and, and you have to look at the numbers and say, hey, look, bro, you are a failure. That's how life works. And I feel as though pop culture is oriented around, oh, you know, how do we play this participation trophy game and whatnot? What, what, what I've realized is that anybody who's seeking to, Parti to, to take part in this participation trophy game, this hyper-liberalism, ends up getting eaten up by the people that are actually taking the initiative in our society. Uh, the society is ran by a very, very small, small minority of people, as you guys already know, right? That 1%, that 1% is very direct in the way that they communicate behind closed doors. What I do is I take that communication and I make it direct to the consumer. I don't, I don't like pussyfoot around with the way I talk. I just tell people as from a, from a, from a very unfiltered perspective, I try and speak to people as an innovator. I come off as being impatient, which I am to certain types of, I'm impatient to people who don't put in the effort to try and understand things. I'm impatient towards people who are seeking to just try and maintain their position of advantage without having to take into consideration anything outside of their, them maintaining their position of advantage. 
lazy people who just simply don't want to like investigate something for 15 minutes. I'm very impatient with these types of individuals. And so you got to realize people like me and people who adopt this attitude are the ones that take the initiative to actually change the world. So if anybody tells you, hey, you know, I really don't like the way that you come off uh, such and such, whatever your name is, uh, I wish you would change your tone. Just realize that if you take that tone and you're getting shit done and you're solving problems, you are going to be the one that changes the world. Those other people are going to be the ones that will be at the mercy of you in due time. Because th- while those people don't get anything done, you are going to get things done. People are going to look at the way that you live your life and say, man, I need to copy whatever that guy's doing. And then the people that have the talent in the society end up taking the initiative and they end up, they and, and the, the cycle continues. This attitude that I have, this perspective that I have, I've just come to realize is the correct attitude to have if you want to get shit done. This is the attitude. And I believe that more people need to adopt this perspective where it's a straightforward, no bullshit approach to communication. There there comes a point where you need to be sensitive to people's backgrounds. There comes a point where you need to be objective. I understand those things. But I feel that the hyper-liberal perspective of saying, this, this, this saying of, you know, I, I don't disagree with what you say. I just disagree with the way that you're saying it. There, there's no way to tell an inconvenient truth correctly. There's no way to do it. And if there is, then essentially it has to be packaged in about an hour and a half conversation. And if you're a person who's getting shit done, you don't have an hour and a half of time to speak every day to everybody, to every person on the planet. It just doesn't work that way. So, yeah. Uh, Lino Sanchez is writing, it's the best approach because most people over 24 won't change their habits unless they, they experience some pain, trauma. In this case, it's the pain of unfiltered truth. Yeah, it, it just comes down to, bro, that not everybody has the experience in life. Not everybody's willing to go through the experiences that lead to you getting slapped in the face. Where it's like, let's say you have a deadline. Let's say you're working at a corporation and you have a, a sales deadline that you need to meet. Let's say you're, you have a, a sales job. If you don't meet that deadline at the end of the month, you're going to be in trouble. Let's say if you're looking at somebody who's, um, who's uh, uh, what would it be? Like if, if you're looking at somebody, and let's say somebody has to manufacture a certain uh, certain parts or whatever, and they got to get them shipped out. If that person doesn't manufacture them at the end of the month because they didn't bitch at their employees when they needed to bitch at them, they end up having to pay the price of failure. It's not until you go through that that you really actually understand how difficult things are. And I've gone through it. I've gone through it. I've put the pressure on people. I've had the pressure put on me. It sucks, man. I know what it's like to not hit your goals. I know objectively. And ultimately, I think people in this society lack that kind of stimulation where where they have to understand what it means to have skin in the game and what, what it's like to have to adopt responsibility and what it's like to take blame. People don't understand how to do that. Um, I've learned how to do it. I realize I'm gonna, it's going to come with – I realize that doing anything I do in my life is going to come with criticism. But ultimately what I would just tell people now is I'm like, well, whatever. If you, who's the one issuing the crit- critique? That's what matters more to me than anything. And if I can't, re- if I can't respect the critique – of somebody, then ultimately I'm not going to, the only concern I have about someone's critique is if there's going to be mob rule. And then I have whatever, a thousand people knocking on down my door. Cause they want to put, you know, they want to freaking burn me. They want to burn me like they did the witches way back in the day. That's the only time I care about anybody's critique, but as it relates to, uh, respecting people's perspectives, if they criticize me, most of the time I don't care because those people don't have any accomplishments to back up their perspectives. So essentially, let me put it this way. This attitude that people have talked about of me saying that it's dysfunctional or that it's problematic or that it's toxic, this attitude is corresponding to, to natural mechanisms. This is corresponding to reality. I get straight to the point with what I do. And unless you do the same, you're going to be a victim of your own weakness, your own oversensitivity. And I feel that this hyper-liberalism is one of the biggest problems in our society. Hyper-conservatism used to also be real sensitive. It's not just that that uh, liberal, hyper-liberal people have become really sensitive in modern times. 
They have been. There's always been hyper liberal types. But back in the day, it used to be the, the, the hyper conservatives that would get offended by any little thing that you would throw their way. And so, um, yeah, I think society, fortunately, is kind of starting to understand, understand things better. I think people are starting to give me the benefit of the doubt. I mean, geez, look at all the results and the accomplishments that I've had to some extent. They're not big. To me, they're not a big deal. But relative to regular Joes, I think I've, I've, I've managed to bring a good team of people together to help build functional patterns. And I've had, had a good filter uh, that enables me to bring the right types to actually uh, bring a good team. I, I have the right filters to bring a good team together that gets shit done. I'm good at that. I'm a good leader. And I think I've proven that to, through time. Never mind the fact that I'm, I'm a scientific researcher as well. Uh, but, I, but ultimately, guys, um, hopefully you're, you're picking up on where I'm leaving things off. I'm hoping you guys are, are gathering how I think, how I process information, and that if you want to get to places in life, you, you can't operate at the rate of stupid people's insecurities. You can't do that. If somebody's too dumb to see the faults in their... Uh, ways of evaluating reality, if they're too stupid to see it and they're attached to their stupid ways of viewing reality, the more that you entertain it, the lesser the likelihood is that you're going to succeed in life. I'll just tell you. It's one of the, one of the most important bits of advice that I could give somebody is what I just told you guys right now. It's the equivalent, uh, it's the equivalent to someone being obese and their family never telling them they have a problem to avoid offending them essentially the same yeah the person's hurting themselves but and never mind that uh you know people oftentimes will say that if you don't take a prick to the arm that you are hurting other people well if you overeat you're hurting other people if you overconsume, you pollute the environment and if you pollute the environment more with your overconsumption by just being a mindless consumer you are hurting everybody else essentially when you misbehave that hurts the environment. It just, the, the difficulty is that people don't typically, uh, they don't see, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't do the math further than what's directly in front of them. Because in general, people are dumb. People are stupid. If we were smarter, we would be able to see further into the future. We'd be able to run, um, how would I put it? You would be able to predict what's happening in the environment better if you were more intelligent. But people can't see beyond, oh man, you know there's a virus right now, <clears throat> so until I take a prick in the arm, and unless I take a, I take a prick in the arm, um, you know, then I'm not a hero. That's, that's the logic that runs through people's heads right now. But if I say, hey, don't overconsume, because if you keep consuming, then ultimately what that does is it, uh, it requires more energy to, to, to maintain that consumption. So every time that you have something with styrofoam coming your way, or you have a bunch of cardboard boxes, I'm guilty of it myself, but that said, uh, the amount that I consume relative to um, to what I could consume is pretty damn minimal. And anything that I do consume relates to some kind of a function. If I buy something I intend to buy and have it last at least hopefully a decade to a decade and a half. I haven't bought new clothes in a long time because my, my intent is to – I guess this shirt. I bought this shirt recently. But I intend to have this shirt last me at least a good ten, five to ten years. I still have like pants that I've had for over ten years that I still wear. Um, they, don't wear, they don't fit me as well just because my, my structure is changing. But ultimately, I try and make things last as much as possible. But if you don't participate in that, you are actually hurting other people by doing that. But again, to draw that correlation, people, it's it just – it's not until something is in front of somebody's face that they begin to see it as a problem. But this, this is the inherent stupidity of people that I'm talking about, that they don't see a problem until it's in front of their face. Back in 2000. I would guess 2006, 2007 when I went to Hong Kong and I saw people wearing uh, the face masks or whatever. At that time, I was like, when is this going to come back to the U.S., right? Are the lack of regulations that go on in China going to end up bleeding into the first world? Lo and behold, about 15 years later, this ends up happening. And now everybody's freaking out, wearing masks, looking like a bunch of weirdos at the store when they don't have to actually wear a mask. But this is what they're doing, Right. So people tell me, hey, people have told me, and not too many of them, fortunately, but people have told me, you know, now do you, it's, it's irresponsible if you don't get vaccinated and you don't wear a mask. And I'm like, well, it's irresponsible. Pretty much prior to this entire situation, uh, you were irresponsible your whole life and you were actually hurting other people by just behaving like an imbecile. So yeah, and I know people don't like it. People don't like, stupid people don't like being told that they're stupid. I understand that. But sometimes there's, there's you're not gonna get through to them anyway. So really when I, when I speak in these terms, I'm only speaking in relation to the people that understand what I'm getting at. 
So that, that way they don't get stuck on the same shit. It's kind of like, you're, you're, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to be like, uh, hey, Darwin, what, what's the, Darwin, 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 hey, hey, Darwin, what's the square root of 44? Like that, that, you know what I mean? Like at some point you just realize people are so dumb that like, it's not that they're dumb. They're just so programmed to thinking a certain way that it's going to become a virtual impossibility for them to comprehend what you're saying outside of them. Like it's going to be impossible for them to understand what you're talking about into re- in relation to what their insecurities will allow. So like if their insecurity is putting forth the block if their insecurity makes them incapable of wanting to hear what you have to say, it, it, that's the stupidity. That's the stupidity. But yeah, people get sick by ignorance. I disagree. I think people get sick genuinely by stupidity. They can't do the math, bro. So Agua Marina, I, I just think in general, if an organism is intelligent enough and it can see, and again, there's there's uh, two-dimensional intelligence, looking at things on paper and looking at data, and then there's practical intelligence. Like looking at the decisions that you're going to make in your life and then not seeing the consequences of those, those decisions and the way that they may end up popping up in the next five, 10 years. That's a different level of intelligence. It's a different level of intelligence that people don't think about. It's because of genetic mutations in the limbic system and hypothalamus from conditioning. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would tend to agree with that to some extent. Yeah, cocoa ramen, I would agree with that because it just ultimately comes down to the fact that people have not been given the right nurturing to understand these things, and so essentially, it just it, like at some, you, you guys have to realize that in order for me to to assume that I was intelligent, I had to earn that distinction. For most of my life, I thought I was stupid until I actually worked on not being stupid. And I still am stupid. I still am very stupid. I'm still working on it. I'm just a lot less stupid than most people. And I think most people watching me right now, if you've been able to, to, to deal with your insecurities listening to me when I speak, then the odds are you are uh, probably not one of the stupid people. The stupid. You know who are all the sm- – uh, there, there was a video that I watched uh, way back in the day from Stephen Colbert and he was doing a spoof on, uh, on Bill O'Reilly. He's like – He's like, yeah, uh, who are all the heroes in the society? The people that watch this show. I guess maybe that's what I'm doing right now. Maybe I'm just telling you guys that you guys are all the heroes while everybody else is dumb. That said, um, the results don't lie. Go look at the functional patterns page and it'll tell you everything that you need to know. But ultimately, guys, this mentality is the one that gets results. You don't get to a better world dealing with people's insecurities, their nonsensical insecurities, entertaining them. You don't... uh, the rate of progress is faster than uh, an insecure person's emotions will allow. And the more that you entertain people's pointless insecurities, the harder it's going to be to attain real, real progress and success. I write on the fact that I'm doing better things with my body and that I'm doing better things with my life uh, than I have in the past. And that's why people listen to me. That's why people continue to listen to me. That's why they keep flocking in and they're like, oh my God, this guy now, he may have found the panacea. He may have found it. And uh, I'm not saying I have, but I'm going to put forth my best foot. I'm going to put my best foot forth to showcase that maybe I have. And when people see the end result of where I'm at, they're going to be very apt to want to listen to me as, I, as time moves forward. And that I'm not just some empty hype show, that there's something uh, going on here. So anyway, uh, I hope that this is making sense. Don't worry about the hyper liberals out there. Don't worry about those feminists out there. They're going to get pissed off. It's the, the, you, we have to realize the more you piss off those hyper liberals and the more reactive they become, the more ridiculous they look to the young people. And young people, when they look at somebody acting out, typically say, "Well, that person's crazy. I'm going to listen to what other the, the other person says." Even if the crazy person that's getting mad is right, the young people are going to look at the person who's overreacting and say, "Well, I don't want to look like that person, so I'm going to adopt the opposite perspective." So. Ultimately, if you're unapologetic in your way of communicating and you don't want to deal with the hyper-feminized, hyper-liberal way of doing things, then um, we're going to end up with a much better world. You're going to end up with a much better life for yourself. Anyway, guys, I um, have said all I need to say.